Seriously, how are you supposed to sand on the inside of all these super tight spaces? Behind me I have my CNC and it cuts out some amazing stuff. Depending on what bit you have, it does a fantastic job with keeping the outsides nice and smooth. Now, when it comes to these really tight areas, it doesn't do so hot. If you looked really close, you can see that I have tabs that are stuck in here that are close to corners and whatnot, and that's such a pain to clean up. Now, I've tried the fast approach and come in hot and heavy. I can tell you it doesn't work. Well, it does such a good job at removing material that it turns this into trash. So I'm going to take you over to the workbench and I'll walk you through the detailed sanding step by step. All right, starting off, I highly recommend a workbench that is mobile. You can have some locking casters and a vise that's made of wood. So the beauty about this is that you can tighten this down on this work surface, this material. And I don't have to worry about damaging this. Now, sure, if I squeezed, squeeze it like I was trying to make some lemonade or something, it would cripple. But right now, wood to wood surface, they both give a little bit. And this is in there nice and securely, but it's not going anywhere. So one of the first things that I want to look at, all right, so right here, you'll see this lip. Now this was part of a tab. And what the tab is, um, when you're using your CNC, it leaves a section of wood attached to the piece that you're cutting out. So that way it doesn't fly off and get stuck into something and, and cause some issues. So for that, I do very simple chisel. I come in and shave it down. Oh man, um, I moved the camera and I stopped recording. I didn't check on it until the editing phase, so I apologize for that. But what I did was I took a one and a half inch chisel and I filed down the tab that was there. I'm gonna use the same process here. And uh, this one is on a slight radius and there is just a small tab I'm pointing to. Um, I'm using a half inch chisel this time. Uh, that way I don't have a big flat spot and literally chipping away just like I did the last one. Uh, a nice sharp chisel will work wonders. It's definitely not a race here. You can see that I'm taking very fine shavings of the wood off and it's easy to take a big chunk out if you're in a hurry. Think of how much work you've put into it so far. Slow down and pay attention to the details here. It's gonna be worth it in the end, I promise. All right, so I took the majority of the material off of the chisel. I wrapped the chisel in sandpaper and I took the flat edge to the top corner. Then I used the rounded side to get the radius nice and flat or smooth I should say and then I did really gentle in the bottom corner um, because that was a little more round than the top and I just went back and forth and twisted it it worked out great again coming in here with the scotch bright pad doing the same thing it gets some of the dust out you can really rub on it. It does a great job of trimming the edges here without being too abrasive. To really get in there, you can force it around. And now we have a pretty smooth surface there. There's still a small lip right here. It looks exaggerated because of the angle, but if we shift around here, you can just see it barely, maybe right here. For the amount of work that, that that is required to fix that, and the fact that nobody's gonna get any closer than about here, which is close to 18 inches away, I would say that that side is good. Using the larger chisel, 
gives you a far flatter surface. So this is like a, a two inch gap here. So the one and a half inch chisel works really well. Are you finding value in this? If so, do me a favor, like, subscribe, and comment. Even share with this with somebody who you think could use this information. When we get down to this corner, all this material needs to come out. The same thing up top here. That's a lot of material that I need to remove here. What happened was I didn't pay close attention to where my tabs were going, and I put them on these corners, which is such a bad idea. Lessons learned, right? So I'm gonna surprise myself here. Use something I wasn't planning on using for this job. All right, while I'm getting the mystery tool out, do me a favor, in the comments, tell me what you think this is. But after staring at it for long enough, I think it's worth a try. Just a reminder, all the links for everything that I've used will be in the description. And that's a Dremel with a sanding drum on it, very small drum. Lesson learned number one, throw in smoke. And that's because I was actually burning the wood instead of sanding it. And then the second is, while that was like genuinely faster to remove everything, I had to be extremely careful to not take too much material. Um, I wanna retain as much of this shape as, as humanly possible. So I, if I kept going in this bottom corner, I was gonna start to mess with the side here so that's why I stopped um, and I'll have to take the chisel and get the rest of that out chisel and sandpaper same thing here because of the angle I didn't want to round this out too much on the inside now up in this corner that worked out really well actually I got very close I think the sandpaper will take care of that very very small lip you see Do me a big favor and let me know which one of these techniques brought you the most clarity or helped you on your next project.